Thanks for joining us again on How Many Light Bulbs Does It Take to Change a Person? I'm Rhonda Ray here with my daughters Kaylee Ray and Allie Ray McMullen. It's just a joy for me to get to share some of my family members with you. And today we're going to be talking about joy and how to find it when things are looking pretty dark. How to deal with the darkness. Yep, and we're going to sock away a little truth with Kaylee. And these are my new favorite, socks. <laughs> Did you get those out of my drawer? No. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, well somebody here might get socked anyway. <laughs> the quarters are going to be back and they're going to be sharing some music with us and, and we'll get some more of those awesome insights from Andy Ray. All that ahead on how many light bulbs does it take to change a person. Whenever you're having one of those days when everything is kind of bugging you, you really have to learn to take some of the annoyances with a grain of salt and maybe a few grains of salt with chips under them. Yeah, also some cheese dip. <laughs> Next thing you know, you know you're, you're, you're having a little nacho party going, hey, wasn't I bugged about something? <laughs> but hey, no, nacho party. <laughs> Not long ago, I was hunting for this one lone little lost earring and I'd been missing it for a long time. So I decided to hunt through some of my old purses and oh, mercy. It's amazing what you can find in an old purse that you don't remember ever having. Yeah, I, I found a lone earring, not the one I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, se I found several pens, uh, advertising places that I'm sure I never went to. And, and, and plus, and this was not a great bonus, gotta say, there was this little river of spilled lotion down one side of the lining of one of these purses. I, I say lotion, it was really more congealed than lotion ever should be. It's like more chewing gum than lotion, <laughs> unless it really was chewing gum, because there was a lot of that in there too. I also found this giant lint ball that looked like it might have been a muskrat in another life. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> and you know, here's some purse counsel. If you find something molding in there, just walk away, because no earring is worth that. <laughs> the only thing that kept me going was that I found this little bite-sized Almond Joy, and you have to understand, I don't think I had used this purse since maybe 2004, but I still ate the candy, because, hey, it was chocolate. <laughs> Besides that, it had the name Joy. It had Joy, word Joy right on it. <laughs> Did I mention the packets of sweetener that I found in there? Yeah, that would have been a pretty nice find, except that some of them had leaked out everywhere. Yeah, white powder all over the inside of that purse. It, I, I know it was just sugar substitute, but it looked like a drug bust gone bad. <laughs> you know, when it comes to walking, in the light though, there's really no substitute. To miss the light is to miss the delight, the delight of real joy, real joy. Isaiah 61.10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. To delight means to find satisfaction and pleasure in. And to delight greatly in the Lord is to find that satisfaction and that pleasure in Him alone. We develop that kind of relationship by spending time with Him, by studying His Word, by, by coming to Him in prayer. And as we trust Him with every single part of our lives, do you know how joyful it is when we start noticing that, that through that sweet fellowship, He's changing us. He's matching our hearts to His. Psalm 37, 4 says to take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Well, there's such joy in seeing our desires line up with His. The best nacho party can't even top this. You know, joy is not um, giggly, silly giddiness. That's not what it is. It's not even simply happiness. Joy runs deep. The book of Philippians is my favorite book of the Bible because it's just so full and overflowing with joy. Yet Paul wrote it from prison. 
chained to a Roman guard. You know, that's not a silly, giggly, kind of happy situation there for sure. But Paul knew great joy. Just look at all the rejoicing in that book. You know, walking in the joy in the light isn't about just waiting for the dark times to pass. No, sometimes it's about learning to smile in the dark. It's about being assured that the light is there even if you can't see it right at that moment. It's about following hard. Psalm 63, 8 says, My whole being follows hard after you and clings closely to you. When times are dark, we're called to see life with eyes of faith. Hebrews 10, 22 says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. Even when difficulties hit, we can hang on to our joy as we understand that, that trials here, they don't affect our eternity. We've been adopted forever by the Father, and He loves us. When we're confident in that love for us, it changes how we see life. It changes how we see our difficulties. There's like a vision change. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight, walking in the light, embracing the changes that He's made in our hearts. It allows us to see life through joy, no matter what the situation, you know? And it's real, unshakable joy. There is just no substitute. As for the sugar substitute, I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure I really want to go there. I think I've decided to just say no to sweet and low. I love socks. I just like them. I have a bit of a sock problem. I will admit I am all but diagnosed. It's just that there's something about getting up in the morning and putting on that fresh, new, clean pair of socks or the bright, happy pair of socks or the pair of socks that matches the outfit. Uh, it just kind of does something to make the whole day a little bit more right. Uh, so suffice it to say, I have a few pairs of socks. A large portion of laundry day is spent you know, sorting them or matching them up or uh, separating bright colored socks from the dark ones, which I found is important because if you do not do that, then what you end up with is, is the dingy things and the, and the discolored things and basically a drawer full of the things that you don't ever really want to wear again. Uh, with, with, a, with a bright side of, you know, having a never-ending supply of sock puppets, which, thank you, is, is, is great, right? Um, but in a spiritual vein too, uh, I've, I've noticed that sometimes we can get in those, those dark places and kind of forget um, that the light of Christ is, is shining ever just as brightly as it always has, that it's consistent, that His love and the lightness of His love um, is, is not affected, you know, like a white pair of socks thrown in with the dark stuff is. It, our darkness can't affect his brightness. Um, there's a paraphrase of Ephesians 3 uh, that says, I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Christ's love is extravagant. Um, and no matter what is on your feet, you can plant both of those suckers on that love and on the assurance of that love. Um, and, and and just the brightness of it that doesn't fade, doesn't get dingy, um, but that is bright for forever. You know the effect. It's it is better than bleach and safer. Uh, so I just encourage you next time you look down at your toes and you see something bright or happy or clean or cute or I don't know if you're a guy like functional um, uh, that you just remember that Christ's love. Uh, is extravagant and doesn't fade and is yours forever and that is how he loves you uh, and where, where did you get that that is that is that is alleys you spit that out right Kaylee great sock wisdom there that'll that'll work for any morning even the dark kind 
you know, dark mornings, not dark socks. <laughs> but have you ever had one of those mornings? You know, I woke up recently to find that my coffee maker had died. I, I guess it had passed peacefully in the night. Yeah, peaceful passing for the machine. Not such a peaceful morning for me. My coffee. You know, to, to make it worse, the internet was down. So no email. There I was, no internet, no coffee, and also no axis for the world to spin upon because Earth had obviously, you know, slipped out of its orbit and rolled somewhere very dark. <laughs> I was grumbling about it all and I was tromping across the family room floor when suddenly I realized I had stepped in a giant pile of cat barf. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, Something had obviously not set well with the cat in the night, and through the night, the entire family room rug had become this barf minefield. If only I had realized that before I took the next step. Yeah, both feet. It was awful. Oh my goodness, this was definitely, you know, I'm, by then I'm going, you know what, this is not settling well with me either. <laughs> This was definitely not one of your picture-perfect moments. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. My dad once called me and asked me to save all of my burnt-out light bulbs, my burned-out light bulbs. And I asked him why, and he said he was thinking of taking up photography, and he wanted to build a dark room. That's my dad. <laughs> I've heard if you hang out, though, if you hang out in a dark room long enough, you might not like what develops. You know, too many negatives. That's what I've heard. Are you feeling like maybe you've really stepped in it? Yeah, uh, that happens. Y you know, anytime you're feeling like that, there, we, we need to remember that there are seasons in this life when those picture-perfect moments, they're just kind of few and far between. It feels like your, your world is kind of rolled off into some very dark place. Where is the God of light when you encounter overwhelming darkness? Where is he? Psalm 34, 18 reminds us that he is very near. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. You know, remember that in a world that still struggles and squirms under the curse of sin, bad things are going to happen. When a dark season comes your way and, and you're so overwhelmed by the pain that you can't see the light, listen, rest in knowing that even in those times, the God of light is in control and he is close by. Never judge his love for you by your circumstances. Sometimes when the Father allows pain to interrupt life, you know, people think that He's not caring. How many times have you heard somebody say that a loving God would never allow us to suffer? You know, but His Word tells us that His ways are not our ways. And the truth is, we may never understand some of this suffering and all the whys of suffering this side of heaven. But there's one thing you can always know. And that is that the love of God for you, his compassion for you, and the grace that he has for you, all those are bigger and brighter than the darkness you're experiencing. You can also know that in the big picture, he's going to make all things right. We won't live in this sin-cursed world forever. Psalm 40, 1 through 3, reminds us of our imminent rescue from every dark place it says i waited patiently for the lord he turned to me and heard my cry he lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand he put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our god many will see and fear and put their trust in the lord so yeah mud mire maybe family room rug atrocities, whatever it is, he will lift you out and he will give you your footing back. And you know what the result is? According to this, it's a testimony of praise. 
that will draw others to him. Listen, when it's dark, do not let the enemy whisper in your ear that your God doesn't care. Believe that he is with you. Know that his grace, it's going to sustain you in this dark time. In the dark times when you can't see the light, touch the hands. Just touch the hands. Those hands, they're sort of monogrammed just for you. The engraving done for you. Isaiah 49, 16 says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. If your struggle is with uh, the darkness of depression, listen, don't try to handle that on your own. Your Father is ready to be your lifeline, and He has placed godly friends and counselors and physicians in this world who He can use to help you. Keep a tight rein on where your, let your thoughts go. Keep in mind that joy is around the corner. In music, there's this thing called contrapuntal polyphony. It's been going on for a while now. You can hear it all the time in modern music. Whenever two or more independent melodic lines are being played at the same time, you call that contrapuntal polyphony. What a beautiful musical texture. Multiple musical themes are put together to create one grand sound. The satisfaction of listening to this music is that every piece plays its part. In a body of disciples, there's this thing called everlasting joy. It also has been going on for a while. You can see it all the time in the hearts of believers everywhere. Whenever an individual submits his or her own melody to the greater work of the grand composer, joy happens. Unfortunately, it's not easy to give up control of the composition. Some people tend to aim for dissonance and wind up with a bunch of commotion and chaos. Some people tend to aim for harmony at any cost, and they just get a bland sound with no tension and no release. So where's the real aim? Well, this is where joy comes into play. The only place I've ever found joy is in the realization that we were made or composed as part of His purpose. Our polyphonic interaction is outlined in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 18, where it says, My friends, we ask you to be thoughtful of your leaders who work hard and tell you how to live for the Lord. Show them great respect and love because of their work. Try to get along with each other. My friends, we beg you to warn anyone who isn't living right. Encourage anyone who feels left out. Help all who are weak and be patient with everyone. Don't be hateful to people just because they're hateful to you. Rather, be good to each other and to everyone else. Always be joyful and never stop praying. Whatever happens, keep thanking God because of Jesus Christ. This is what God wants you to do. It's important to note that these verses are not instructions on how to improve your own melody or make it solo worthy. These verses are instructions on how to be a part of the grand sound that is being composed by the Holy Spirit. The greatest joy is knowing that since we are His notes on His page, we're ringing out the tones that we were created to resonate. The satisfaction of listening to this music.
Thanks, Andy. And big thanks to the Corners for your ministry. You guys really know how to drive a point home. I love that. You know, speaking of driving, I, I do like my car, but I'm just going to tell you, it's nothing fancy. No bells, no whistles. I do have seat warmers, but only on really sunshiny days when the sun shines just right through the windshield, you know. Still, you might be impressed to know that my car's tank can go from zero to 20 bucks in like 10 seconds. <laughs> I don't have all the machinery and the cameras and all that car magic that are, that'll tell you when you're about to bump something. So I have to rely on my eyeballs and my, my pretty bad spatial perception. That's probably why I feel it's necessary to be one of those take no risks ever kind of drivers. Yeah, changing lanes for me, it's, it's dramatic. <laughs> and I'm just warning you, it can be really annoying to get behind me on one of those two lane highways because I shall not pass. <laughs> the other day I was behind one of those slow moving vehicles. It, it was one of those big, huge pieces of farm machineries and it, machinery and it had these machete things sticking out the sides I'm telling you no way I was passing that thing I had enough road in front of me to land a small plane and I wouldn't go around <laughs> it didn't get embarrassing until somebody passed me and the farm machinery thingy in one big go round and <laughs> I noticed that it was a vehicle carrying a prefab house. Yeah, seriously, how absurdly slow do you have to be going to get passed by a house? <laughs> you know, Paul had maybe probably the most dramatic lane changes in all of history. Before encountering the light of Christ on the Damascus Road, Saul of Tarsus was, you know, most of his time and energy was spent trying to find new ways to destroy Christians. He was heading to Damascus to round up some Christians and, and bring them back to Jerusalem as prisoners when God stopped him cold. Acts 9.3 tells us that as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Paul described it as a light from heaven brighter than the sun in Acts 26.13. Paul fell on his face and he heard a voice saying, Saul, why do you persecute me? And when he asked, who are you, Lord? The answer was, I am Jesus of Nazareth, who you are persecuting. Listen, Paul got up from the ground, a changed man. And that showed up in his response. What was his response? What shall I do, Lord? What shall I do? Saul's plan had been to make this big, prideful, triumphant in entry into Jerusalem with all these Christian prisoners in tow. Well, the light on the Damascus Road had blinded him, and so he instead made his entry back into Jerusalem, being led like a little child, led by the hand. He was blind for three days until God sent Ananias to heal him. And Wow, what a different road Saul of Tarsus took than what he had planned talk about a change and it wasn't a temporary change either no it was complete he was transformed from this guy who fought Jesus at every turn and persecuted his people to one who ultimately endured suffering and terrible persecution himself for the cause of Christ he surrendered his will to Jesus and he was a new man and God used him to change the church. Not only did Paul immediately preach Christ boldly, but, but through it all, God used him to give us a lot of the New Testament. We're charged to love and serve Christ just like Paul was. We're redeemed with purpose, and, and that is to get in on what God is doing and shine glory back to Him. Philippians 2.15, Paul writes about how we are to shine as lights in the world. That dramatic change of heart happened to Paul when he encountered the light. Happened to me as a little girl. I realized my sin and my need for a savior and I gave Jesus my all. It happens to everybody who encounters the light and who will respond in repentance as Paul did and with a, what shall I do, Lord? And life is never 
the same. Are you allowing him to continue his changing work in you? Listen, understand when he changes your nature at salvation, that change is instant. Your direction Im immediately changes from hell to heaven, but that sanctifying change in you, it might be a longer process. Don't doubt it, know that he's at work. Could I encourage you to, to let his word light the way for how you live, let his spirit shine in your heart, revealing what's to stay and what's in your life that needs to go. Let the Lord shine through you, lighting the dark places of the world. Listen, be a bright spot for others by loving them right into the light. You know, it says in Revelation 21, 24, that the nations will walk by the light of the Lamb. Let's walk it. Thanks for letting us come along on the light bulb's journey. And thanks for coming with us. We've had a couple of uh, light bulb over the head moments. <laughs> yeah. And how about we wrap up with a little look at some of the God light in the Bible. Not just any light. We're talking spectacular, eye squinting, glorious light. Think about it. The pillar of fire, the burning bush, Moses' face, <laughs> the star that led to Bethlehem, the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, in Exodus, when the tabernacle was finished, the light came down from heaven to dwell in the Holy of Holies. It was the light presence of God. Later, when the temple was finished, His glory light showed up again to dwell in the temple. Well, you know, since the Holy Spirit now lives in us, we've become that place where His glory light dwells. So, my friends, by His power, let's gloriously shine it.